SpaceX has swiftly dismantled its newly built test system after the successful S-37 trial, raising questions about its next move. Meanwhile, Blue Origin completed another crewed New Shepard mission with all astronauts returning safely. At the same time, Rocket Lab is gearing up for its first Electron launch in over a month. Let us dive into these updates in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The back-to-back -back static fires of S-37 exceeded expectations, signaling Starship's full return to operations at Starbase. The first test showcased coordinated engine thrust, while the second proved the propulsion system's durability under a full-duration burn. Together, they mark a key technical milestone and the revival of testing at the orbital launch mount after months of repairs. What sets these tests apart is the unprecedented volume and quality of footage that SpaceX released, including unique views from beneath the test stand. Those angles offer an intimate look at the engine's ignition sequence, from the initial plume of flame through the oscillations of exhaust as it channels through the flame trench. Engineers at Starbase modified the orbital launch mount specifically for this purpose, reinforcing its structure and adapting propellant lines so that it could become the first Starship ever to undergo a static fire in its orbital configuration. That fact underlines SpaceX's commitment to transparency in demonstrating its technological prowess and accelerating the feedback loop between test and redesign. In the hours following the second static fire, S-37 was lifted from the launch pad and placed on a transport stand. By the morning of the 3rd of August of 2025, it had returned to Megabay 2, where technicians immediately began preparing Pad 1 for the next phase of Starship activity. The massive Marvin Crane was mobilized to remove temporary ship adaptations, most notably the quick disconnect umbilicals and the test stand itself. This work, executed with surprising speed, signals that Super Heavy will soon be stacked directly on the orbital launch mount, eliminating any reliance on the provisional test support system. SpaceX aims to finish dismantling and clearing the temporary apparatus within a day or two, clearing the way for Flight 10. At that point, two questions emerge. Will Flight 10 launch directly from Pad 1 as soon as it's ready to maintain the ambitious cadence that Musk has described? and what will become the temporary test stand and support equipment once it is removed. The provisional nature of the test support system was always clear. It was a stopgap measure while the Massey test site underwent repairs following the S-36 anomaly. That incident left the flame trench, fuel feed lines, and quick disconnect mechanisms damaged by overpressure and debris. Early speculation suggested that full repairs or even a complete upgrade of the Massey infrastructure could take many months, potentially slowing Starship development dramatically. However, recent developments paint a more optimistic picture. Reports indicate that cryogenic testing of S-38 has already proceeded using temporary piping rerouted around the worst of the damage. Visual evidence of repaired valves and freshly welded fuel lines suggests that SpaceX technicians have made swift progress in restoring basic functionality. If the cryo tests were greenlit, then removing the temporary test stand and ship QD ahead of static fire trials of S-38 seems entirely feasible. In that scenario, the Massey test site could return to full static fire capability by early September, only about a month after the second S-37 test. That timeline aligns neatly with SpaceX's ambition to conduct frequent, tightly scheduled flights. Yet the ultimate fate of the Pad 1 support system remains uncertain. If the Massey repairs finish on schedule, there will be little need to reinstall the temporary stand. It would instead be dismantled and stored, ready to be redeployed should a rapid temporary fallback be required. Conversely, if unforeseen complications arise, whether in obtaining critical parts, navigating logistical challenges, or securing regulatory approvals, SpaceX could could bring the test stand back to Pad 1 to support S-38. There is a strong indication that technicians did not destroy the stand when removing it. Eyewitnesses reported hearing grinder sparks and torch cutters in action, implying that components were carefully separated rather than cut apart roughly. That careful approach suggests an intent to reuse critical fittings for another static fire campaign. Only time will tell which path SpaceX chooses. If the temporary system returns, it'll likely be, re be, re be reinstalled shortly after Flight 10 is complete. If not, the S-38 cryogenic test will become the final exercise on the provisional infrastructure before a permanent transition back to Massey. Either outcome underlines a broader theme, SpaceX's emphasis on modular, rapidly deployable test assets that can flex around unexpected delays and hardware failures. As for S-37 itself, it now sits in Megabay 2 atop its dedicated workstand. 
Technicians have already removed the ship QD interface that connected it to the test stand. It will soon and will soon integrate additional hardware for its next mission. Those add-ons include the flight termination system, which provides range safety oversight, and the payload attachment mechanisms designed to secure Starlink satellites. Interestingly, the Starlink payload integration box that arrived at Mega Bay 2 a few days earlier has been returned to the Star Factory, presumably for a final round of modifications. Once that box and the FTS package are installed, S-37 will undergo final checks before rolling back to Pad 1 for stacking along with its Super Heavy booster. SpaceX's internal timeline envisions these checks and installations wrapping up within roughly a week, a brisk pace that would position S-37 and its companion B-16 booster for a mid-month launch. Musk has pointed toward launching Flight 10 around the 16th of August. That date would maintain SpaceX's pattern of rapid reusability. Launch, land, refurbish, and relaunch in a matter of weeks rather than months. Achieving such a cadence would represent a remarkable turnaround from the drawn-out repair efforts following the S-36 incident. Still, multiple factors could influence the schedule. B-16, which will serve as the Super Heavy stage, is currently undergoing its own final installations after passing its engine tests. It may not move to Pad 1 until the temporary test stand is cleared and the mount is fully refurbished. Meanwhile, on the regulatory front, the FAA's mishap investigation stemming from Flight 9 remains active. That review centers on composite overwrapped pressure vessel debris that washed up along the Mexican coastline, as well as structural questions about the Starship vehicle itself. Although SpaceX can legally proceed with new launches during an open investigation, each flight requires an amended license or special conditions from the FAA. Delays in obtaining these approvals could slow the timeline, though industry insiders expect the agency to grant clearance once SpaceX finalizes its corrective actions. Starship now stands at a pivotal moment. Recent tests confirm engine reliability, infrastructure upgrades, and a renewed push toward launch readiness. With the booster primed, pad equipment refurbished, refreshed, and static fires resumed, Flight 10 could launch as early as the 16th, pending regulatory approval. A successful mission would validate drone ship recovery and pave the way for monthly or even bi-weekly flights. This momentum excites the aerospace world. Frequent Starship launches could accelerate satellite deployment, deepen lunar and Martian exploration, and redefine space access. The back-to-back -back S-37 static fires embody SpaceX's rapid prototyping ethos, proving its ability to recover from setbacks and maintain an aggressive timeline. So will Pad 1 return for S-38 or will Massey take over? Let me know with a yes or a no and share your Flight 10 date predictions. I'm now betting on the 16th. If you found this breakdown insightful, like and subscribe. We'll be keeping track of SpaceX's push toward a new era of rocketry. That wraps up our look at Starship. Now, let's turn our attention to Blue Origin's latest crewed New Shepard flight. On schedule, NS-34 lifted off from the West Texas site at 8.43 a.m. Eastern or 7.43 a.m. local to carry its passengers past the Carmen Line, the 100-kilometer boundary widely recognized as the edge of space. From ignition to capsule touchdown, the mission unfolded flawlessly over a roughly 10 to 12 minute profile. Passengers experienced several minutes of weightlessness and panoramic views of Earth's curvature before drifting back for a soft landing under parachutes. This flight marked New Shepard mission number 34 and the 11th time Blue Origin has flown humans aboard its reusable suborbital vehicle. Though New Shepard flights often carry wealthy adventurers or celebrities, this time the spotlight fell on Justin Sun, the 34-year-old founder of the Tron blockchain platform. Sun had originally secured a seat on New Shepard's first crewed flight in June of 2021 by bidding 28 million US dollars, an auction win that coincided with the spacecraft's historic maiden human voyage on the 20th of July 2021, the 52nd anniversary of Apollo 11's lunar landing. That flight carried Jeff Bezos, his brother Mark, aviation trailblazer Wally Funk, and Dutch student Oliver Damon. Scheduling conflicts prevented Sun from joining them at the time. In a post-flight statement, Phil Joyce, Blue Origin's senior VP of New Shepard, reflected on the mission's international flavor. It was an honor to see so many nations represented on our flight today. The view of our fragile planet from space has a unifying effect on all who witness it, and I am always eager to see how our astronauts use this experience for the benefit of Earth. Moreover, proceeds from Sun's $28 million bid have been directed to 19 space-focused charities with the aim of inspiring the next generation to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics to shape life beyond our planet. 
Blue Origin's steady suborbital flights show technical maturity, but its real goal is New Glenn. Progress has been uneven, with few public updates and no clear launch timeline. For now, the focus stays on tourism as the orbital program advances quietly. All eyes remain on signs of engine tests, hardware integration, or pad work at Cape Canaveral, each a step closer to an orbital flight. Next, we have our last update for today. Rocket Lab has broken its month-long silence by completing a wet dress rehearsal for Electron Mission F-69 nicknamed the Harvest Goddess Thrives. On the 3rd of August, Rocket Lab announced via X that the rehearsal was complete, clearing the way for the fifth Electron launch of the year for satellite operator QPS Incorporated. The mission is set for liftoff at 3.45 UTC on the 5th of August or 10.45 PM local on the 4th. Earth carrying a synthetic aperture radar Earth imaging satellite to low Earth orbit. This marks Rocket Lab's 69th Electron mission overall and the fourth for QPS Incorporated under their multiple launch contract, which calls for eight dedicated flights to build out the company's radar constellation. Rocket Lab began the year with a noticeable inactivity in January, followed by a flurry of launches in the spring and early summer. After back-to-back -back missions on the 26th and 28th of June, it paused for all of July. That month-long gap was unexpected for the second most active U.S. launch provider, but the completion of S F-69's wet dress rehearsal demonstrates that the team has swiftly returned to operational readiness. If F-69 lifts off as planned, it will be Electron's 11th mission of 2025, putting Rocket Lab within reach of surpassing its 2024 record of 14 flights. Consistent, high-cadence launches are vital for Rocket Lab's goal of dominating the small satellite market and proving its reliability to commercial and government customers alike. Minimizing downtime between missions will be critical if the company hopes to break break new annual records, and meet growing demand for responsive access to space. The success of F-69 will signal whether Rocket Lab can maintain a steady tempo through the remainder of the year, or if it will need to shore up its production and integration processes to avoid future lulls. And with that, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.